Hey, friends. Wango, you don't hear tunes. That's worrying, mostly because of the fact that OBS definitely hears tunes. In fact, OBS thinks that the tunes might be very slightly loud compared to my voice. Oh, you do hear tunes. Okay. Wango, Kate, Sierska, Yeyindi, I hope you're all doing great. They are, in fact, slightly loud. Okay, well, that's fixable. Dwango, thank you for 33 months. I am glad that you're here. Laratia, how's it going? Alright. The last time we played around uh, with just building out a skeleton of an 8-bit CPU. So we've got a lot of work in this directory. And... It's going to be good for groundwork, but most of what we've done, we're going to scrap, I think. Um, let me think. Let's, let's start with mapping out, like, what's a good way to make me implement addition and subtraction in a way that would make sense? Let's write out a couple of programs real quick, like not optimized at all, not super optimal. In fact, being a little bit bad is fine in this case, um, just because it forces me to implement more instructions. Let's let's write out multiplication. Let's write out some modulo math because uh, those are two instructions that don't exist on this CPU. Uh, we're going to be doing 6502 specifically, so. Don't actually know the, the mnemonics for 6502, but I have a reference. Alright, so it's gonna be add and carry. And this isn't gonna be um, perfect. This is just gonna be uh, some pseudo assembly. see sometimes 11 times 11 that's fine that'll fit in one bite I mean it's 6502. So it's definitely not going to be AT&T syntax. I think it's LDX and LDY for my move instruction. Yes, LDX and LDY. LDX, immediate. Y, immediate. In this case, I don't need to jump over the code and then start a loop because this is, I already know what I'm starting with, so we can just uh, Do we have LDA as well? I assume we do. Yes, LDA. C 
for Abby Carey. We want actually. Yeah, for something this easy, it'll just be, it'll be a, a loop and an ad. But I don't know 6502, so I am looking over, um, actually the Rockwell 65C00 family processor, just because the scan of this manual is way better than the scan of the 6502 um, set. So I've got that up, I'll link that in chat, um, and I have the 6502 tutorials uh, opcode list up in chat, or uh, I've got it up and I'll link that in chat. So if it looks like I'm reading a bunch of shit, welcome to 99% of development. Absolutely, Endless re uh, Revolt. How's it going? Yeah, unfortunately, all of my knowledge essentially is x86. Um, which, as it would happen, doesn't doesn't translate super cleanly to 6502 instructions. Hey, Kashire, been a while. I've been hanging out during your um, your session streams. They've been real fun. Yeah, in this case, uh, DSL stands for Domain Specific Language. Um, give you an idea of what that's going to look like. So we started essentially uh, defining a really minimal language that we could use uh, when we were playing with the fictitious CPU last time. And that got us pretty far. Uh, once we figure out what I want to write in terms of the assembly, next we will um, We'll figure out what I want the code that I write to look like in terms of the uh, the domain specific language, and then we'll implement that DSL. Yeah, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Kashayar and one other person whose name I forget. Actually, I forget if I ever knew their Twitch handle. Um, they do uh, music streams uh, twice a week. Uh, Kashire can link um, link that content in here, but it's uh, insert scary name here, and it's just it's a good time. It's rad.
Oh no. I might not be live. Which would be very sad for me. Hello. Okay, cool. I am live. My IRC client believes me to be offline and is continuing to give me chat messages. So, neat. Yep, Yendi, that's roughly what I was thinking uh, for the multiply. My big question is looking at um, the ADC instructions. If this were like x86, I would just want to add Y2A and then deck X and be done with it. Actually not I'm not sure which of those instructions is going to be the one to use I could of course I guess uh, write 11 to somewhere in like the zero page um, which will force me to write more more of the instructions immediately. That might be the way that we go, but that kind of sucks. Go, no, I believe, Sarah, there should be a C of the instruction. I would be, yes. Equal. Is it just JMP? What's the, the mnemonic, mnemonic here? Unconditional jump. Jump. Perfect. I think that's supposed to be TYA, not ADC. Maybe. Transfer Y to A. I definitely don't want to do that. Uh, 886502 is most certainly not my chess rating, as evidenced by the fact that I lose pretty much every chess game that I play. h -Punk, thank you for the good luck. Yeah, this is like way, 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 way outside of the code that I normally write, so that's the sort of thing that makes it fun, though. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I enjoy the micro-corruption CTF so much. Digging into a processor that you've never touched before is really fun. What am I doing here? Uh, like, the com like the comment says, this is literally just code 2 multiply 11 by 11. I'm pretty sure that the ADC is what I want to do. Uh, 
I think that that's correct, Evan. I don't know. I don't. I don't know people's speed air ratings. I would not be surprised to learn that like supercomputers have substantially greater than three thousand ELO though. Yes, ADC definitely needs an argument. I'm guessing that I need to write to memory and then just reference it. Because ADC does not appear to have a mode that just does like ADC X to A, which is a bummer. Yo, Skatey4, it's been forever. I hope that you're doing well. Binary Nova, how's it going? There we go. Magnus Carlson, 2882. So if, uh, because I know we've got plenty of people who actually do 6502 and 5A22 stuff in chat, um, how do I write a thing to memory? Just writing it to the zero page is fine. STA, really? Ah, uh, okay. ST store accumulator. Got it. We don't need that. Do eleven will be Zero later, STA. Zero page. I don't remember if there's anything really important stored in the zero page. So I'm a little bit scared of clobbering stuff, but. Why not run ink 11 times? Sure, actually, why not? Like I said, this is meant to be written kind of poorly in in such that it's not the most efficient. Using um, yeah, you, using ink actually is fine here because of the fact that it forces me to implement ink before this is going to work. So good call. Oh, and ink. Uh... Oh, wait. Ink increments memory. Damn. Is there no INA? Would be nice. INX, INY. All right. Well, we've got STX, so... You ever realize that you're a complete dunce and you almost uh, decided to multiply? 17 by 17, which is very different from your original problem statement.
Okay, there we go. And then just need my jump. Absolute. Yeah. All right, so eleven store it at zero page eighty. Load X eleven. Load A with zero. Gonna add eleven to ADC, or to, to the A register, um, with add with carry, decrement X, if X is, is equal to two, and this we don't have to do, like we could just check the zero flag, but this is, again, specifically um, aiming to implement more instructions, branch, if it is zero, we're branching to two, where we've got the break. Otherwise, branching minus four from that position, which is almost certainly not what I'm going to want to do. This is uh, because this is not instructions, it's bytes, but we'll deal with that a bit. This is shitty, but I'm pretty sure it will multiply 11 by 11. I'm ready to be wrong. Comparison's not going to work. Compare compares with the accumulator. Darn. Well, I guess we are going to just be branching on zero then. Ah, it's CPX and CPY. Thank you. See, this is what happens when the aim of streams like this is to be didactic, such that I'm not, I'm not prepared. I haven't prepared for this. start compiling this real quick because this is almost certainly not correct uh, mnemonic code but I know what I meant okay so LDX with an immediate gonna be a two zero zero increment X Uh, could one use TXA to move X to A then compare? Technically, yes, but then I would need to, like, push A onto the stack, which does force me to implement more, but we're going to do modulo after this, so let's keep that in our pocket for then. Hey, this wouldn't be fun if I wasn't here hanging out with people. Um, so joking about, you know, inverted commas helping, like, I appreciate it. These things are fun because I'm hanging out with people doing cool shit. Uh, Dwet it. Um, so you are correct that it's pointless because you can use CPX, but I don't have to call increment X 11 times here either. Like there's there's many ways that you could you could subvert the need to uh, 
to, to use some of this code. This is, in fact, not efficient. Actually, given that we're starting with two known operands, um, I actually could just work out the number ahead of time and put that as uh, as what I load to uh, to the A register. Broker, thank you so much for 15 months. I hope that you're doing well. Go that is E8. Or X. Zero page is going to be 86. 80. Have another X. A2. A. Clearing A. A9. Zero. Add carry. Zero page offset. Sixty five. Equal FO. That O2 is actually it's XX. There we go. Jump is actually to a full address. Hmm. I technically, to, to start, I'm going to be just loading this at, at hex 8000. So I could work out where that's going to be, but that kind of sucks. Is there an unconditional branch? I guess I could just do B and E. No unconditional branch. Oh yeah, I could do a CLC then branch on carry clear. Yeah, that works. call and that actually forces me to implement one additional instruction nice
very clear. It's 90. need to work out these branches. So here, it's going to be pretty easy. One, two, three, four. I'm actually not sure that that's correct. It might be three. I don't know if consuming that bite moves the... Um, moves the PC up before this uh, instruction runs. Ah, uh, BRA is in the 5A22. Got it. PC is moved first. Thank you. People who know the CPU architecture in my chat. Branching minus two is, is uh, self-loop. Good to know. So we are actually wanna No, you don't. Give me the other screen, please. Okay. We're going four instructions. No, now we're I think we're going five instructions. We're going five instructions. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Remember everyone, real hackers can easily do two's complement in their head. Me, not a real hacker. Sib JE, welcome in. How's it going? Real hackers can do reverse Polish notation. I like RPN actually. <laughs> That's true, numbers aren't real. Numbers are fake. One's complement plus one. That sounds correct. Like, I learned about one's complement academically, like, almost two decades ago. And then I said, negative zero sounds fake as hell, and nothing uses it, so I don't have to care. And then I, I have proceeded to not care, ever. Floating point still has negative zero. Well, the 6502 doesn't do floating point. So I don't know what floating point even is. I've never heard of it. Matt Mackey, how's it going? Technically, delete works there, but that's fine. No, uh, yeah. Let's just reject on empty. That's better. 
Lovely. What's wrong? What am I messing up here? About join. Uh. There we go. I don't think that asking what a DSL is is an uneducated question. Uh, Domain-specific language, Curtis got it correct there. Uh, basically, the idea is that I want to write a more generalized language that we can use for describing uh, an emulator. Yeah, that's true, Laratia. Floating point will never have negative zero because of weird errors. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it, Curtis. Bringing a language up to the problem domain. All right. So we've got we've got our program now, and we have a list of instructions that I want to implement. forget what we did in the debugger. All right, so that debugger is largely, that's, that's as close as we got to consuming the sort of DSL that we produced previously. It's sort of, it exists partially in CPU, it exists partially in that debugger. Um, let's go ahead and We want to put this. Let's put it under lib. All right, so let's let's start thinking about how we want to do this. Um, at this point, there's no code that exists that I'm going to be consuming yet. I'm going to write out what I would like things to look like. And then we'll start implementing it bit, a bit at a time. Omni, how's it going? Yeah, Evan, the, uh, the panel that we were on was a ton of fun.
All right. So when I define a new CPU, I guess I'll give it a human readable name. Why not? And a default register size that might be good enough. Then after that, I need to. Hmm. Yeah, actually, I think define register just reads a little bit better to me. We'll define a register. It's going to be called X. Y, we have A. I need to double check. I think that the stack pointer is also 8 bits and the stack just lives at X100 forever. I have to look that up. Yes, it looks like that is the case. Yep. Always at hex 100 to 1 FF. All right, cool. So I think death stack, death flags, and death. Let's just call it Def Pro PC. Like, Def Program Counter is just way too long. I don't think that there's any way to uh, address the PC in. in the 6502. I don't see anything that directly addresses PC at all. I might have missed something, but. The idea is that uh, I'll be able to, for instance, write an emulator merely by specifying the CPU instructions flags and so on. How do I think I'll handle coprocessors? It's a good question. Um, it's one that I haven't fully tackled, and that's one that we're going to have to get to um, as time goes on. Uh, the way that I did it in the original implementation, actually, pulling up. The, the debugger is going to be a better way to do this. We have a bus which uh, the CPU connects to and additional devices are able to connect to. So, like, super vanilla von Neumann architecture stuff here. My naive solution is going to probably look a lot like this, and it's probably not going to scale well. Yeah, it'll probably work fine for older systems. So the important thing here, though, is that when we're defining our program counter, we're saying that it's got 16 bits, not 8. Our default register size, 8 bits, but we can override it. And that's probably something that... I'm not aware of any CPUs before, like, 
early SSE enabled Intel CPUs. It had general purpose registers larger than the uh, the bit width of of the rest of the registers, but doesn't hurt to um, Oh, that's right, the Z80. That's right, it did allow you to combine two registers to make a bigger register. Yeah, because uh, I know the Game Boy allowed, uh, allowed you to do that. Go faster? No, if anything, I'm going to go slower. How's it going, item pouch? Yeah, on Tuesdays, I usually do a tech stream of some sort. I love the fact that you apparently told me to go faster, assuming that I was doing speedrunning before, uh, I'm going to guess, before the the video loaded in. All right. So next up. Defop. May as well do like defop code. Defop makes sense. like to because we can use this as a uh, disassembler as well this would be for example LDX something like that Take a look at what we had written previously because I recall thinking that it was okay. Oh. That's that's probably why I didn't remember what we had settled on as a so next up we're gonna need This one, this one might be a fun challenge to tackle. Sixty-five hundred two instruction table. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's gonna make lookups much quicker. Thank you very much. Although I have to admit, I'm not quite clear why you have both pairs of the upper nibble. Oh, 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 wait. Oh, interesting. I see. Okay, that's just... All right, that's, that's a layout trick to make it less painful. Got it. Oh, don't worry, like, some egrets, this is going to be terrible code. It's going to be awful. Okay, let's think.
maybe we give number of additional bytes to read. For example, we would then just set register x to operand 1, and our operands here are always assumed to be okay. That I don't love. But it's a good first step. If we can get the first step looking looking like it works, then we can we can refine it from there. We need to take a look at LDX. It's going to affect flags negative and zero. That's nice and clean. This actually... I don't love doing this because it's... It's nicer to just do things bitwise, but... We also need to define some flags. So we've defined our flags register. Need to look up. Actually, I think that I stole the layout for the fake CPU that I built. That's right, writing bad code is the first step to writing good code, or writing worse code. It's just a little bit nicer in terms of layout.
All right. I suspect that because BDSLs often like to have things uh, work a little bit wonky, this is probably going to be where things blow up. But for now, let's go ahead and get started implementing what we've got written out here, and we will take the uh, take the knocks as they come. 6502 has a lot of little perks, such as page crossing, adding additional cycle. I did see that in the um, uh, mentioned in the table um, in the PDF that I linked. Define method here it might be good enough. Actually, no, wait, I think that I can just do death inside the class new. Capital, how's it going? Yeah, the example that I'm working from is uh, the 6502, um, specifically looking at the NES's uh, implementation thereof. Fine for now.
You good? That's good enough for now. So, death stack, death PC, and death flag uh, flags are all special cases of death register. So, this should be good enough for now. Nice name. We're going to have to define some... Oh, actually, no. Oh, that's actually not going to work. Okay. In fact, I think for now, death stack can just straight up be def register. I think that we're going to want to change it a little bit later, but for this initial implementation, that should be fine. And likewise, I think FPC will be the same. Just for now. Likewise, def flags for now will be the same. Def flag and def op will be things that we actually do need to implement. Oh, does the NES not not have the BCD support? That's A-OK -okay with me. Um, I had noticed BCD was uh, supported in the... Like, I'm just looking at the official 6502 um, uh, tech sheet. So, man, telling me that I don't have to implement uh, BCD, I'm okay with that. Hebby, how's it going? Rico made the 6502 clone without a license and removed the patented part, which was decimal mode. That's really interesting. Flag. So it's going to be name and specifically which bit. You know what? Let's let's do this. I think even though Ruby is uh, pretty nice normally because we're doing metaprogramming sometimes equals methods. Um, set register or register set? I think register with the name of the register always at the end feels better to me. Let's remove the equals from our, our metaprogrammed stuff.
That's good. Yep. That's going to be a problem everywhere. Better? Better. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. I think that it's really important where, like, no matter what your skill level is at, you've got something to share with people. And it's good to do so. Let's get death flag defined, and then I'm going to run AFK real quick. So now, we are bit one, we're going to shift to the left zero times. Put it in, no, I'm, I'm zero indexing. All right, so one, shift, uh, bit, that's what I called it, yep. Right bit times. So we'll shift our mask over, hit the bit that we want, then we'll shift back to the right so it's always going to be a one or a zero so that we uh, return. Oh, this is terrible. There. All right, so I've got one more to the left. Two, one, zero. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, gotcha123, yes, this is Ruby uh, using it to write uh, DSL for uh, defining emulators, which will look something like this, unless it completely blows up, in which case, hey, streaming failures is just as important as streaming successes. This is actually a really interesting... Um, Really interesting uh, practice just in keeping the code in my head as it scrolls off the screen. Normally, uh, I use a substantially smaller font, and my upper monitor is um, 
is an ultra wide, so for something like this, it would not be too much of a problem to see the whole thing on screen. Okay, so here we are going to need that outer set. Actually, this is going to be the first time that I'm going to give us a multi-line. Because... Who is... Fetch our old flags. If one over bit times XOR it so that we mask only that bit. will unconditionally clear that bit. Or it. Bow and one, just to make sure that we were past a single bit shifted. Bit places are. Then finally, we will set. Gross. Also, this is bad. We just do flags register mask instead of size. To bits, which will either be the number of bits uh, that we explicitly set, or the default number of bits, either way. Oh, wait, no. Literally was making a mask. One, shift, bits, minus one. Cool. Sort by one shifted to the bit place, which we then or with the vowel and one, just to make sure we only get one bit uh, sent over, shifted the bit place. That looks good. Can't wait to find out how this blows up. It's 
Streaming failures is mostly what you do. Wango, the stuff that you that you stream is ridiculously um, ambitious. Even when something that you're attempting fails, one, it's almost never your fault, which, you know, is pretty cool. But two, the depth with which you're able to speak to where the failure is most likely coming from is astounding to me. All right, I'm going to run AFK real quick. Um, we've only got a little bit more to define until we start watching the way that things are going to start blowing up, which is going to be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to running into actual failures and then um, and then from there, seeing how we're going to work through them. Anyway, sit tight, everyone. I will be back real shortly.
Yes, Carl. How's it going? Death flag. Death op. That's next. We need to define our op codes. Sepple. I don't love operand. I don't love operand one. That's gonna need to change, I think. Um, let's just. That stinks. We're gonna change that. Doing that actually solves a few problems when it comes to um, the word that I'm looking for. Um, the the weird capturing properties of lambdas when it comes to Ruby and and metaprogramming. I think Next, we're going to start needing to think a little bit more about consuming data because we picked LDX uh, just because it was the first thing to do in um, in that program. But we need to be able to read from memory at where the program counter is. But we do have a separate, like, special PC. We can do that. And that's fine. The other thing is we're trying to be cycle accurate, like not accurate down to the silicon, but accurate to the number of cycles that we take. Because of that, um, it would be, generally speaking, good if each of our definitions return the number of cycles. Mm, but... We're actually consuming that that lambda here, so we can't just consume. I have to think about that. 
Omni, thank you for hanging out. For now, for iteration number zero, I'm not going to bother with cycle accuracy. That's going to be the next thing that we tackle. But for now, I need to be able to read. I need to be able to read and advance the program count. Now we need to start thinking about communication over the bus. Let's take a look at our prior art. In fact, before when we initialized, we would accept a bus. I'm actually not sure if I can define initialize with define method. Okay, if I was if I was to be completely honest, it's not the it's not the outcome that I expected. Given three, expected two. Why did A get in array with all the arguments? There's definitely something that I don't fully understand going on here. Um, neat. Expected three, good. Great. All right, we can do it that way. Weird. What? Weird. Anubis, how's it going? Yeah, this is Ruby. In fact, before I continue, I'm I'm gonna um, make a note to look up what in the world was going on there. Initialize, arity is weird. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Cool. That was bizarre. 
I have no idea why I behaved that way. Looking forward to finding out some weird ass, awful reason for that. But we are already inside class new uh, with the do block, so that's great. Yeah, initialize. Plus. Plus equals plus. Now, look again over here. And clock. And read PC, give us bus read at PC, and then increment PC by one. Makes sense. What's up? A lot of stuff. Moving house. Can't get dishonored to run with Proton. Oh, huh, that's no good. Decorated the house for four days with a 20 hour day painting every single room. Oh boy. And you fix your cafeteria. Nice. Yeah, in Python, my understanding is that uh, self is not obligatory, except you do need to provide a context for instance methods. But uh, I don't do a ton of Python, and instance methods work slightly different compared to Ruby, which is one of the things that tends to throw me off. All right, so we have read, advanced PC. What were we looking at? Just bus.read. Delightful. to do any weird self.call shenanigans. PC and a nice bit mask, delightful turn X. Hey, you didn't yell at me. That's always good. All right, so now we can read arbitrary data from the PC. That's nice. that I need to do. Oh, right. For that operand one stuff there. All right, this probably going to blow up. 
that's fun. DSL 12. No. 18. Oh, yeah. It's, uh... There we go. I don't have a bus class. Actually, can I reuse the bus class that I wrote last Tech Tuesday? Maybe. Let's... Get some RAM from eight thousand to a thousand. Don't need to write anything. Nothing's blown up yet, and that's quite interesting to me. I expected things to, to self-destruct well before now. Millennial Falcon, how's it going? Mellows, thank you so much for 35 months. Yeah, code stuff. Leggy, thank you for 38 months. I feel like I should quit now and just let Leggy take over. Um, of the two of us, one of us has a PhD in computer science, and I dropped out of university, so... Huh? Ops? The op code was defined, so that's cool. This actually should break because PC is currently zero. Not what I expected to see is the blow up though. Let's see.
Read PC. Makes sense. All of the registers that we're creating, we're not actually instantiating until we set some value to them. Register name, register name, register name. Death flags is going to be another one. Now again, this should blow up because we're trying to read from a non-existent um, region on the bus. Did the bus handle that? I might have made it so that the bus just returned zero. So in 32, might be the same problem. Integer with nil. We're still in, still in bus. So let's take a look at bus 25, actually. So, address that we're getting is nil. Alright, well, let's start. Suspect that PC is going to be nil in this case. Do this. To be sure, I don't see instance variables. Let's set register PC zero. Interesting. And now if we read, it's going to be fine. Well, it's a different type of blow up, which is... Sixty-five 
that's probably because we're getting uh, a... Take you to 8,000. Neat. Uh, and that's fine, because realistically, we don't actually care about the return type because everything happens internal to the object. Uh, let's catch up on chat. Yeah, no, I'm... I'm old. I dropped out of university a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, like Kate is... It's a, a wild world out there. Um, from the infosex side of things. Oh, Anubis, I didn't realize that you're also a security analyst. That's wild. Right on. Well, let's see this play out anyway. I'm pretty sure I know what... Well, no, 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 we don't need to. We know what's wrong. This is easier than I'm making at the moment. Self dot instance variable set flags. It's an empty array. And what we're gonna do is on each def register, we're going to Registers is an empty array. With each def register, we are going to is that right. I think it's from under class at this point. Or is it from within the defined method? Uh, I hate metaprogramming it so fiddly. This is just going to be a part of the part of the the prologue to any of these meta um, meta functions, except for def flag, def op. Those are good. And then Let's just dump that to the dump that to the um, console.
just to make sure that I'm doing that correct. There we go. And that's expected because we're at zero and the bus doesn't know how to handle non-existent uh, things. So then if we set register PC to 8,000, hold the op, back true. Making progress, but not where we need to be just quite yet. We're dying in death flag. Okay. 63. CPU DSL. Also, pump the value to the console. Zero. Nil. Interesting. Is that right? That might be right. Hey, that's good. Brilliant. Value, mask, old flags, new flags. We set the zero flag, value, mask, old. Cool. All right. This is working-ish. Hold on. Uh, welcome in. Anubis, I am glad that um, one of the two of us knows any Spanish at all. I assume Spanish, although Portuguese. Aha. My mistake. Well, that that goes to show you exactly how much uh, I comprehended what was uh, was being said. All right. Now I think it's time for us to define our next operator. So E8 will be increment X.
right. INX is going to affect flags negative and zero. see it work. I'm going to see it work. not working. Okay, so what's neat here is that register is uh, not being set, but the flags are. So, pop code is being it is check it is currently setting zero and not negative zero is two all right well that's interesting all right take a look at you let's take a look at def register So that does work as expected. You ever do something that just look any time that you think, maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe I'm just a complete and utter imbecile. Been programming for nearly three decades. I forgot that the word increment means add one. x equals 1.
Next up, Store X. Oops. Eighty six. You are one operator. Eighty six is dollar go one operand. So right now we're not using uh, this disassembly, but I think that that would be cool to add later. I want to be able to look at memory and give the um, the uh, assembly for whatever is in memory. Actually, yes, we are going to read advance. So this is actually at the zero page. I believe that that's our contract for the bus. Right, address, data. Perfect. Cool. I like that, yeah. I said it was simple. If it was easy, I wouldn't have spent the past 24 years trying to get it right. That's that's about correct. Uh, Anubis, yeah, it's been big giant circles this whole time. Started with Hive Jump, then um, there came an Echo, now Glory Days, which I think is the one album that everybody knows of theirs. X, X flags, none. Okay. Let's take a look at our previous. Okay, previously we were not. Um, all right, we do. We can do that as well. Haven't been setting the reader write um, 
routines, which hasn't mattered that much so far, but now that we're about to start storing and loading. That's not the correct range. I don't care. Actually, just kidding. This uh, can work now. I don't have a load function. We can whip that up real quick. Uh, yeah, I do have a marker for 80 characters. Um, I clearly don't hold strictly to it, but especially if I'm writing something that I want to maintain long term, the pause, pause, I'm going to listen. Anyway, uh, if I'm writing something that I intend to maintain long term, the 80 column is a pretty good point where if I start pushing beyond it a lot, I want it to stand out to me. I want to go, am I doing something here where I could refactor this in a more maintainable way? Sometimes the answer is no. Oftentimes it's no, but sometimes the answer is yes. All right. So CPU load is not going to do anything for me, but... Lots of file reading here. So, well, let's do each with index.
write that to our, our main memory. This is going to blow up right here because we haven't yet defined a clock method. Of course it might blow up earlier because I'm an idiot. Use sixty five oh two. Negative flag. Oh. If it's just flag underscore in now. Flag underscore in. You know how I labeled it V right here and I just ignored what I wrote because okay cool now it blows up because clock doesn't exist yep but this is great now we've got that debugger work that we did it's working again Kate you got a jet well thank you for hanging out I hope you had fun so make it exist, that is the next step, indeed. That's another case where we can look back at our prior art. Is this something that I define through the DSL? I think yes, because the way that, for example, the break flag works is going to be not standard. Uh, the way that uh, some CPUs are going to care about alignment, others aren't. Thinking about like the MSP430 here. So I think that clock gets defined through the DSL.
Alright. So. We now know that we need to have cycles remaining function. I don't have to look this up anymore. I can just do self.send. Pop instruction. It's quite nice. Look up the pop code that way. Pop up code. Before we were putting the cycles remaining. Inside that. So now I think. This is now going to be something that gets hap uh, taken care of inside here. We need cycles remaining, decrement cycles, set cycles. Now we can start assigning cycle cost to these. Once I finish the CPU emulator, am I actually going to code anything in it? I mean, maybe. It's not impossible. Um, I ended up writing a little bit of software for the MSP430 at, um, after writing a really minimal emulator for it. Um, this was years and years ago now. Looking up LDX. Actually, wait. StoreX. How long do you take? Your page, three cycles. Keep these in order, shall we? Set cycles three. Codex is two for an immediate. There's no way it's not going to be two. One or two, I'm sure. Two machine cycles. All right, so that's been done. Set our clock function. We need to define our def clock. Turning self from self clock 
her from set clock hopefully works. Let's see. Hey. Actually, let's leave it as death clock because... Consistent. Consistency is nice. Ended up setting X to A2. Hmm. Let's go ahead and define our break as well, because I, I happen to know that that's Zero. Break, I believe, is also two. Interesting. Seven cycles for break to compute. That's not what I expected. Long craft, how's it going? No, dwet it. Um, writing a DSL is very different from just uh, writing. Like if I were to write a, a 6502 emulator directly, for one, I probably use Ruby. But even if I was using Ruby, most of what I'm thinking about while I'm doing this is the way that I can best generalize the things that I want to write so that they can end up turning into, you know, a MSP430 emulator, a 68K emulator, a name your CPU here emulator. We read it. Oh, no, we're reading and advancing PC. I'm actually a little bit confused about why things worked out the way that they did. All right, A200. We read. We should not have X equal A2, but we're going to. something weird.
to make sure that break works. Yeah, break works. Great. PC, PC's not moving. That's why. Hey, remember that bug that I wrote earlier? So once we hit 11, now we going to hit store X, which I think I implemented. I didn't store it. Okay. Did we store it? Maybe we stored it. Where did I throw it? Uh, four? No. Zero. There we go. Stored it at 80. All right. Well, fair. Um, Give me more output. It's 11. Hey, there we go. We do store the X. It's just barely outside of the range that we were inspecting. All right, now soon, we're gonna store 11 back in X. I think the next op code is not yet implemented. Load A. Load A is not yet implemented, so this should blow up now. There we go. We're getting real close, though. Alright, so load A. A09. Or A9. Also takes two cycles. Brilliant. Add with carry. So I'm going to be real honest. Um, of all the functions that I that I knew I was going to end up writing today, add with carry and subtract with carry, which is subtract with borrow, I think. Um, they're the two that I was least looking forward to, because, like, add with carry is at least relatively straightforward, but, man. Just adders in general are complex little pieces of machinery. So, add with carry. We're adding up to 65 is zero page lookup. Yeah, that's right.
Cycles 3. It's not our opera in though. That's actually our address. Read the address. That's our operand. Except it's register X plus operand plus a carry flag. Let me look up what flags. Negative overflow zero and carry sense. Um, actually, so that I know whether or not. We're just checking for the high bit um, beyond the one byte boundary. We'll shift it over. It's either going to be a one or a zero. It's the only bit that can possibly be set after that um, bit mask. That's going to be real easy. We also set negative zero and overflow. Gonna have to look up the documentation for when overflow is set, but the other two are real easy. I should probably just do that for these. There's no reason to assign them to a variable. The interim variables don't make it cleaner. Setting A. No, oh, just result. And the way that we have things defined when we set a register over here, uh, we're automatically masking. So I don't even need to worry about the mask there. It's quite nice. OMG Penguin, how's it going? Uh, we are building out a DSL, a uh, domain-specific language, for defining emulators and getting started defining a 6502. Probably not going to finish the 6502 tonight, given that it's already 3.30 in the morning, but I would like to get a really, really um, inefficient, in every manner of speaking, uh, multiplication program. I would love to get this running on the emulator tonight. Set flag zero. It's again result is equal to zero. Go 
easy. All right. Setting overflow, however. That I'm going to have to look up documentation. Um, documentation once again. Uh, Gertis. Cycle accurate. Yes, we are setting cycle counts for each um, instruction. It will not be accurate to the silicon. But for those of you playing along at home, uh, in chat again is the uh, data sheet. Um, the scan is just way nicer than the 6502, and it, it is the, the instructions are equivalent. Um, this has more instructions than the 6502, but the instructions which exist are represented accurately and just the scans better than the 6502 sheet. Unfortunately, it is scanned and not OCR, so... Having to dig for... adding with Carrie's uh, instruction, like the um, logic behind it, specifically how overflow works. Isn't it nice when you get an OCR PDF? Yes. This doesn't fully define exactly how the over flag, the overflow flag works. Unfortunately. the Google machine. Sixty five oh two dot org. The overflow flag explained. Perfect. being silent, I'll just link what I'm reading in chat, which is uh, 6502.org slash tutorial slash vflag.
Okay. Let's let's build a truth table. Maybe. Let's note it this way. Positive plus positive equals positive. That is not an overflow. Negative plus negative is negative. That should also not be an overflow. That's an overflow, and vice versa. That'll be an overflow. Positive plus positive, positive plus negative equaling positive. It'll be impossible for either of those to overflow. I need to know the result. Original A and original B. How's it going? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. All right. So let me think. So if the positive plus negative, we can never overflow. The others, we care about the result. All right. That just means... If we're different, we can't overflow.
otherwise what we care about is that we are the opposite of our result that is the overflow condition so i think we are one xor a x or b is that right that's a logical knot which fun fact um or bitwise knot uh, ruby doesn't have bitwise knot it's great i love it this is ruby the manner of speaking it definitely runs through the ruby interpreter I hope that I hope that hope you feel better. Well, Ruby does have tilde. Let's explore what happens when we use a tilde. Due to the fact that Ruby has arbitrarily sized numbers. Using a bitwise knot doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense, which means whatever you do, it's going to assume that you're just taking the two's complement of the bit size number plus one that you have defined. It's an interesting function that I'm not sure I've ever found a practical use for. Yeah, it's, it's a weird thing that kind of makes sense when you go, oh wait, yeah, Ruby doesn't have like a 16-bit int type. I've never seen the Unary tilde used in practice. It just doesn't happen. All right, we need a, we need a table. A, B, R, result. Yeah, that's the right number. They're different, it can't ever overflow. All right, is that right? Yeah, okay, cool. What's the bitwise option for this?
as if they're the same. Different, it'll never be an overflow. Let's if they're the same. And the same and a is different from the result okay or b is different it doesn't matter got it okay cool do something like that in a while. We've used it before with WX Ruby. Really, the, the Unary tilde with an integer specifically. Default frame style and so bitwise and Whose complement of resize border or resize box or maximize box. That probably makes a lot more sense when you think of that as something that is going into a CFFI um, interface. All right, so C in Z V all looks reasonable. Fun. Decrement X, C A. cycles. Gonna set negative, gonna set zero. All right.
You ever look at code that you wrote less than 20 minutes ago and you think, wow, I'm just not very smart. Let's go ahead and fix some bugs here, eh? Hope that that's correct. X is going to be fine. Hopefully just X. Don't we have increment X? We should have increment X. Where did my increment X go? Didn't copy and paste. It sure is almost 4 a.m., isn't it? Anyway, uh, CPX is going to be E0, so before E8. We'll take operand. I did remember to read in advance if you see on this, right? Yep, okay. Compare those flags as if subtraction had been carried out. So we are going to be in Z. Equal to value. Carry it so. Native gets set on the accumulator. CPX. Branch of equal. Status flags makes sense.
right. So, French equal is FO. For once, I don't get to know exactly the number of cycles ahead of time because if we cross a page boundary, so if we're equal, it's going to be just if zero is set. This is how it's supposed to look. Actually, the 6502.org page doesn't doesn't show that, but I'm guessing based on everything else, it's probably what it's meant to be. So if Z is non-zero. F equal negative four. Uh, that's negative four instructions. That's actually substantially more bytes, but that's fine. Oops, EF 39. Yep. This. Yep. That looks like. Sixteen bytes, is that right? We'll be here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We'll be here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten. I actually want to be forty-five. have to regenerate that uh, code. Right. What I was wanting to do, F5.
So remember when I said that there's very few practical uses of the Unary tilde? Funny story. Branches have a cost of branch not taken requires two cycles. One of the branches taken, and we cross the page boundary. Okay. So we're taken and we've crossed a page boundary.
Oh, right. Ninety. Branch on carry clear. Ooh, I just realized we're always reading the offset. It's true for both of these branches. Oh. All right. I need to regenerate. Assemble this. I'm glad those differ. Sylvia, thank you so much for the sub. Yo, Andy, how's it going? Welcome in everybody who just joined. Um, we are writing a DSL, a domain specific language, specifically for, um, for describing CPU emulators. So the first half of the stream was writing really not that much code, is it? 90 lines of code. The second half so far has been implementing one at a time instructions for the 6502. And yeah, I try to spend Tuesdays doing something tech related. Uh, I've done uh, like really, really basic uh, reversing in the past. I've done um, some exploit development. I've tackled some of the uh, machines on Hack the Box. Uh, in general, my aim, and I'm getting worse and worse at it as we walk away from 4 a.m., but uh, my aim is to, number one, always choose some like really low-level, easy targets, because I want these streams to be didactic. I want to 
have uh, some back and forth with folks who hang out. I want to explain the way that I'm thinking, hopefully in a manner that's clear, hopefully in a way that helps to uh, helps to give other people maybe some insight into the way that somebody might think about these problems. It, you know, it's rare that there's a right way to think about problems, but in general. Am I going to be doing Fleuron this year? Maybe. It depends on what's going on at the time. Um, 2020's been wild. It's still March. It's March, what, 156th now? Something like that? But yeah, presently planning on it. All right, where were we? I think that we're ready to watch this crash and burn. That's not what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. All right. Oh, wait, no. There we go. Reset memory somewhere? I don't see it. Could be. I see a column. I don't, I don't see. Wait, no. We loaded zero to X right first. Let's just. 65 or two. Read only is fine. There we go. Now we can follow along what's going on. We're at 8,009. Lots of E8s. There we go. Now we wrote R11. Address 80. Next we should load 11. Or why am I loading in 10 into X? You ever get the feeling that maybe I'm just not Super bright. Neat. All right. Well, we're going to get the wrong answer, which is great, but that's fine. Five. ADCA. I need no it's it's actually fine as long as all right up code 24 interesting wait no 24 clear carry yeah I did not implement clear carry is entirely correct. Five hundred two, one hundred.
All right, we are almost to our break point. Jump to the break. No, I have screwed up. I guess I need to be... I'm jumping to. Compared to X to zero, Harry is one, zero is zero, which is weird. So negative, that's correct. You know how this is named Compare X? Well, I shouldn't be comparing register A. Try that again. There we go. Zero is set. We should jump to the break. 1D. It's a break. Break is one. Now, the result of this multiplication is wrong. The reason that the result of this multiplication is wrong is because of this bug right here. This is, in fact, uh, exactly what you want to do if you want to multiply 10 by 11. should now give us 121 as a result. There we go. Delightful. March 179th. Excuse me. Anubis, thank you for hanging out. Yeah, if you've got work at 11, or at 7, uh, maybe maybe now is a good time to dip. That is, you, you stayed way longer than anybody could have expected you to, and it's super appreciated. I hope you had fun. But given as how it's almost 4.30, we do have a working 6502 collection of instructions. There's a lot more CPU that we need to implement at this point. But this is a really good first step. And just to recap, like the way that we went about this was first, like we, uh, I can get Tmux to give me the pain that I want. We just started up here and we said, 
this is kind of what I would like this to look like. I would like to be able to say, give me a new CPU that I can spec out. Let me start defining some registers. Let me define a flags register and then like the position of the flags. It was just a matter of first, let's let's figure out what we want the implementation of the CPU to look like. And from there, that really gave us all the scaffolding that we needed to be able to start writing out the DSL. And then after that, it was just, you know, kind of the nitty gritty of it's time to write a bunch of code that actually accurately represents what the CPU is going to be doing internally. Internally, CPUs are super, super cool. They, um, it's easy to think of them, especially if, you know, you live in a debugger or, you know, higher level than that as, you know, a really clean state machine. But CPUs themselves, like you pull some pins high and it sets up a program, which in turn runs inside the CPU, which is what allows you to write bigger programs, which are just the composition of a lot of applications of that smaller program that runs inside the CPU. They're really, really just delightfully complex and interesting pieces of hardware. But I think that that's going to do this for tonight. Um, I've been working on uh, breaking up the content that I'm doing with Tech Tuesdays. I'm eventually going to uh, make some standalone stuff that'll go up on YouTube kind of alongside it. So if you if you watch videos for the sake of like learning how somebody thinks, that's what I like video for is I can watch somebody work and go, that's the way that that person's brain, you know, works. And then I can start picking up, you know, some thought processes that I find useful in what I see. Um, and the stream, the, the, the stream in its entirety is still going up on YouTube. If you're the type of person who wants to learn something, like learn a topic as opposed to learn a thought pattern, uh, I want to I want to have content up on YouTube that'll facilitate that as well. What platform is that? Um, depends on what you mean. Uh, this is Ruby that I've written the DSL in, and uh, what we've defined is. Certainly not comprehensively, uh, but we are working on uh, defining an emulator for the MOS 6502. Next fun part, adding more devices to the bus. Next part is probably going through and writing each one of these uh, instructions. Um, and I'll, I'll probably be doing that live next Tech Tuesday. But yeah, this has been this has been fun. Hopefully everybody else has had fun as well. <laughs>